Wang Yi travels to Australia next for the seventh Australia-China Foreign and Strategic Dialogue. That comes a few months after Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's visit to Beijing helped ease tensions and improve ties. Alexander Downer, Australia's former Minister for Foreign Affairs, says it's good to talk. Well, it's important that there is a constructive dialogue between the senior levels of the Australian and, and Chinese government. I think um, this idea of not speaking to each other bears no fruit. I'm glad that uh, both sides are engaging in discussion. They don't have to agree on everything, but they do need to be a, uh, prepared to have frank conversations. It is the first face-to-face -face for seven years, and a lot has happened since then. Where would you say are, are the pressure points? There's things, as you said yourself, they're not going to agree on everything. Well, I think the trade sanctions that China has been has introduced are, are, are completely counterproductive. They cost Australia, of course, but Australians will bear the cost. Um, and they cost China in terms of access to um, cheap and uh, reliable imports. So I think um, putting all that behind us will be a very good thing to do. It makes sense to have a, a robust trading relationship. But there are lots of opportunities, aren't there, certainly for closer trade ties. I wonder which sectors in particular you think are going to draw investment. Well, you never know. Um, you, you do see huge um, growth in all sorts of aspects of, of Sino-Australian trade. And I'd like to see the Australian wine export industry get back into business. I think it's... Um, pointless to have been imposing sanctions on Australian wine whilst importing wine from from Europe and and South America so um, I mean I think that that is an area where Australia and China can make great progress but there are all sorts of areas where our trade can expand there are obviously some sensitive areas um, China doesn't want Australia to invest heavily in their domestic telecommunications sector and Likewise, Australia wouldn't welcome Chinese investment, heavy Chinese investment in our telecommunications as an example of there being sensitive mm. sectors, and we should be aware of that. What about on things like climate change and, and the green transition? There, there are points for, of collaboration there, aren't there? There are excellent points of collaboration there. I mean, China is, of course, a huge producer of batteries, uh, for electric vehicles is the world's major producer of them and Australia will need to import large numbers of electric cars so um, uh, Australia nevertheless is becoming a very major producer of uh, critical minerals such as lithium which is needed for batteries so um, I can see as time goes on in some of those very practical ways there's collaboration I mean solar panels come they're mainly made in China. I don't know if they all are, but they largely are. Um, and then there, at the political level, um, you know, Australia's committed to net zero by 2050. I mean, there's a real question mm. as to whether Australia will come <laughs> anywhere near meeting that, but that is the commitment Australia's made. China has a slightly different commitment. China is the largest CO2 emitter in the world, so everything China does um, assumes real significance in yeah. addressing um, the introduction of clean energy. But this is an area where we can collaborate.